All right. Artists who seek perfection in everything are those who cannot attain it in anything. That's an art quote accredited to Eugene Delacroix. Hope I'm saying that right. But uh, welcome to Document the Game. I am Miles Davis, a.k.a. Master Burn, along here with... And I am Delta Tango Mike, that is DTM. Let's start the show. Yo, this Bone Crusher, and you're watching the Art is King podcast. Cast. Cast. Yeah, cast. talking about today man we're talking about creative weaknesses and strengths and All i right. think that this quote kind of starts to frame that thought process because it's telling you that if you're always looking for that perfection when it comes to the art then that means what that you're imperfect everywhere else? yeah well i think if you stress out too much about being perfect i have a quote or a little thing that i used to call happy accidents uh -huh. a lot of people have heard that right mm -hmm. when you experiment with your artwork i love happy accidents because you never know what you're going to get right so it's, uh, it's like that, that Forrest Gump thing, it's uh -huh. like a little box of chocolates. <laughs> you, you start digging in your crayon box, see what you get, you know? Uh -huh. So, but, uh, but yeah, mm. when you experience happy accidents. So sometimes your weaknesses, when you confront your weaknesses head on, whether it be composition, color theory, whatever it may be in your paintings or illustrations, uh, when you face it head on and challenge yourself to be better in your weaknesses, you will discover that you're much better than you think you are, but you will also start to develop new tools for your artistic tool belt. So I don't think weaknesses are always weaknesses. They're places that you can learn. So that's how I like to look at it anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's, it's not a failure. Let's just say it's not a failure, it's a, it's a learning opportunity. Right, exactly. You know, and I think that's where art needs to be and that's how you should look at it. It's real easy to feel down on yourself when you're looking at other artists and how they, they create certain things and how well it looks and, how, and then you immediately recognize the parts that you're lacking. Right. And, uh, but you got to understand the art is a fun thing. You started exactly. doing this art thing because it was fun. It was, it was an experience 100%. that you enjoyed. Yep. And, uh, and then we let the outside world start worry us and, and, and make us feel down. And so that weakness, whatever it is that you feel that you see that you need to work, that um, you're falling short on, then that's the things that you should look at and say, well, let me experiment and be creative with that. Here's right. a quick story on this. Um, years ago, I was uh, hanging out in a different part of the country on vacation with my wife, and we meet, met up with some artists. And, uh, and there was an artist couple, uh, um, husband and wife. And they were telling us about some of the sales that they had found in the art store. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And then they started talking about some of the stuff they bought that they had never played with and never used before. And, uh, and then immediately in my mind, I was like, why would you waste your money on that stuff when you're not really good at that? I would spend my money on the things that I like to buy, that I like to use already. Right. And the more they talked, the more I realized that I, those were my weaknesses, and that I need to look at it as a happy accident type of thing, as a creative thing, and I should try those things out as different mediums, because I haven't tried them yet, and I need to remember that art is a fun thing to do. Right, yeah, it's courageous to do something like that. Yes. When you're dead set in your ways, and you step out of your boundaries, your comfort zone, mm -hmm. that takes courage. Right. And you know, and the, and the yeah, more you do yeah. it, the better you, the more comfortable you're going to become doing it, and the, and the better you're going to be. And and the that, less the you know? sting is going to hurt when you feel bad about what you created or is not what the thing that you want, and you're not always going to get the reaction from other people the way the way you feel about your art. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I so, know that. So that little thing is going to get smaller and smaller and less and less. And, uh, and, that, and that, not just because your art is going to get better, which it will, but also because you'll start wor stop worrying about how other people feel about what you're creating and then, then and get more into depth into why you're doing it and what you're learning from it. Correct, correct. Yeah, so going to the strengths, though. Mm -hmm. You got to talk about strengths too, right? The quote mentions weaknesses and strengths. Okay. So you should also celebrate your strengths. I love very, very bright colors. Um, I can tell you right now that perspective and color theory were two things that I struggled with as I was coming up, and I still try to experiment with different things there. I'm trying to go into a darker, more neutral palette in some of my stuff now. And I've been painting since I was five years old. Like I said, I'm 40 now. So um, I've had a lot of experience with this kind of stuff, and, and I can tell you that I still experiment, and I still mess up, and there's canvases y'all will never see. 
<laughs> because, but you know what? I got to do it. That's uh -huh. the only way I'm gonna become a better artist. And, and mm -hmm. I think this art life is an art journey. It's a lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. and it's a passion. And it's something, if you're going to do that for your entire life, you can't just repeat the same imagery and the same subject matters because your life changes. Yeah. So you have to embrace your strengths and, and move forward with those as well. I try to incorporate, when I go to a large canvas, I try to incorporate some of my strengths and some of my weaknesses. Because mm -hmm. what I feel like that does, it helps balance out the piece a little bit mm -hmm. so that if the weak spot is there, then the strong part will help the weak spot look a little bit better, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You know? All right. So that's, that's kind of something that I do. I kind of play around the studio. So that's kind yeah. of a little solution for you if you want to play yeah. around with that. Mix your strengths with your weaknesses. Yeah. Um, with my weaknesses, I study a lot. I go ahead and start looking at other artists and how they solve whatever yeah. problem I'm having. I love that. Always learning. And, uh, yeah, and then practice, practice, practice and, uh, until, it, until I can find ways to incorporate into my work. And, uh, and yeah, and strong is not my, I mean, color is not my strength, and, uh, but I, I still do it. I'm still going to jump in and, and worry about it later and just focus on the things that I need to do right now. And it's kind of become my strength as time's gone on because people react good towards it. Right. They see my colors and, and how it pops off and, uh, and they always comment on it and I'm like, good. Because I wasn't thinking about yeah, it. Right. But I yeah, right. Yeah. I well, just so, needed to do it. It's always a natural instinct, though, yeah, too, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh, like, like, uh -huh. well, I've had to get really uh, uh, educated in, in areas where artists, like, I've always thought, I still think like a five year old. Trees are green, grass is green. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. Grass can be yellow. Mm -hmm. You can do a golden field. Trees can be all kinds of colors. Yeah. Skies. I always think of nighttime sky being navy blue and black and daytime sky being maybe blue. Mm -hmm. Not true. Mm -hmm. If you actually look at sky photos and stuff, you start seeing. And it took me a long time to get into to skies and clouds and stuff that mm -hmm. were different colors than what my little kid brain was like. I got to do those colors. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think that uh, we can always get stuck on that, on your strength. Mm -hmm. Like anatomy is a strong point for me, um, proportion. And, uh, and then I look at other artists and how they mess up that anatomy. And I was like, but that looks so great. And, uh, and so, yeah. so then I challenged myself and, uh, and to take my strength further. And not just settle and yeah, be yeah, happy never with settle, it. Never yeah, settle. Just let's push it. Don't push don't for push perfection. The quote says, "Don't That's do right. that. You'll right. never attain it." Mm -hmm. So accept that fact. You're never yeah. going to be perfect. Nothing you do creatively is ever going to be perfect, especially in your eyes. It might hold magic for somebody else, but for you, you knew the process. You knew the struggle, so you have a personal relationship with it. You want them to look at it, and if they can see what you did, wonderful. But you want that audience to have a, a moment with it and mm -hmm. to enjoy it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And they might, what you think is a mistake, they might actually love. Never forget, art is subjective. Yep. And I always look at artists' work, and uh, especially professionals, and I, and I study it, and I'm looking for the imperfections. Like, I know there's something here that shouldn't have been here. But because you admire the work, and it's a great piece, and proportions are great, uh, uh, composition is awesome, then you would never notice where they might have uh, missed something. And, uh, and so I'm sure that if you were sitting there next to them, they would be worried about something that they did, did that it was not right. But th that's how it's going to be. You're going to sit there and, and uh, judge your work really harshly when somebody else looks at it and they're going to love it. And then there's going to be the opposite of that where you're very, you feel very great about this piece and the other people are not feeling it. They're like, Man. That happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. This piece, my wife didn't like this piece. I tried to give my wife this piece and she was like, meh. <laughs> so I still love her. She loves a lot of my work, but she never likes the work that I think she's going to like. And I do yeah. that with a lot of my audience, too. Mm -hmm. My audience, you never know. You can't second guess. Just do the best you can every time and explore your weaknesses, but stick to your strengths as well and try to meld the two and continue the journey. So what are a couple of um, pieces of um, um, actionable items we can tell people? Like solutions if they're having a problem with this kind of stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing to do is to sit down and look yourself in the eye in the mirror. You know, um, Accept the fact that you're not perfect. It's okay. Um, accept your weaknesses. And sometimes it's hard to do if you're prideful, like me, and you're impatient, like me. Uh, it's difficult sometimes to, to come across a challenge and you don't want to face it right away. But the sooner you face it, the sooner you can start finding your path to remedying whatever that problem may be. I used in the previous video hands. Mm -hmm. Hands might be a weak spot. Mm -hmm. Do whatever works for you to try to get better at your own hands. Whether it's like 10 minutes a day or you sit down for two hours at one time on a Sunday or something. Do whatever you can. Mm -hmm. And do it the way you want to do it. Draw hands in red line. You don't have to use pencil mm -hmm. uh, or charcoal. Um, you know, but I think identifying your weaknesses honestly with yourself is the first step to overcoming them. So right. that's definitely something you have to do. Yeah. And uh, the one piece I like to share is that um, check out other artists' work 
to see the things that you can learn from it, yeah. but don't judge yourself by it. Because right. you are where you are, where you need to be, and as long as you can, are open to continue to grow, then you'll, you'll keep moving forward and find that those weaknesses then turn into strengths. Yep. Something exactly, like that. yeah. There you go. Keep it strong. <laughs> there we go. I am Delta Tango Mike. Please leave us a comment, a feedback, or some suggestions. So tell us what it is that you feel that your weaknesses or strengths are with your work. Tag us in your work. We'd like to see more of it. Definitely. And, uh, and thank you for watching, y'all. I'm Miles Davis, a.k.a. Massive Burn. See you on the next episode, all right? Peace out.